What up, y'all? Welcome to the show. My name is Roy, and this is Autoholic Media. What I'll be showing you today... Why do I always say today? Let's just go with in this video. What I'll be showing you in this video is how exactly this whole mythical creature works here. Don't go online and look it up in forums because you'll probably find posts from years ago that say this is made of glass inside, nobody knows how it works, it's magic. Like, uh, I don't know, when this system first came out people were so scared of what it was and it, w it was apparently just terribly, like, unreliable and one of the re big reasons of that is there was a recall that solved some vent issues it probably pushed fluid into places it wasn't supposed to be but we've come a long way since then there's a lot more known about these but there's still a lot of information that's not out there and hopefully i can help with at least a little portion of what's going on here so let's start out with how this is set up okay you got your filter in here that's this is what everybody replaces when they talk about a filter and fluid change. So get rid of that one because that's the old one. It's dirty and gross. And this cover, here's your fill port or level check and then here's your vent tube. This goes up here. This goes on there like that and the vent tube clips in right here and that goes like that. So when you do a fluid change, you're emptying all this out. I already cleaned it. and. What you're doing is filling this chamber. If you fill it through this hole, you're not getting above this wall here. There's nowhere for the fluid to go once it's in here unless it overflows through here and down into where the pump area is. Now, one of the reasons you use the vent tube to do the final fill, put the plug back in after it's just a little bit of dribble out of there, put the plug back in, do a few more pumps or whatever, what have you, however you're filling it, uh, squeeze the bottle, whatever. Uh, you need some sort of tube going in there. Fill that. It's actually, when you fill it through there, it's skipping this part portion, going over here, but it actually goes back into that portion for whatever reason. I'm guessing to prevent fluid, help prevent fluid from going back out or something when it needs to vent pressure. But anyways, what you're doing is this, this um, chamber coincides with this right here and there's nowhere for this fluid to go right here except for down into the reservoir and then when you're filling it up after it's already filled to the top of there it's pouring over and down where the pump is this is the pump right here and what the pump does or why you need to do that is once you put the cover back on there's no fluid here so if you only fill it up to there you're not going to get any fluid in there and your pump's not going to have anything to push through the system to fully um, get the fluid at the level it needs to be and you're gonna probably not gonna have the pressure you need either because it's got no fluid to pressurize so you're gonna fill that up a little bit and as it fills up it's gonna drop down to that level if you have it just right and then it'll be fine because as if you look here well okay hold on so this pumps through the filter into the end the accumulator and what the accumulator does is it takes the pressure from the pump and stores it because this pump is only going to prime the system and once the system's primed the pump turns off so your accumulator is going to hold that pressure until it's needed and one thing that's nice about sobs at least the programming of the sobs. Um, here's the controller right here. The, the programming in the sobs is proactive instead of reactive. So it's when you hit the hit the gas pedal, it's going to engage the rear tires before it senses any slip in the front. <clears throat> and that's very, I guess beneficial when you're looking at it from a performance standpoint because you're going to get more of a rear wheel drive feel when you're launching. This is the controller. This one's from uh, the original one off of this unit, uh, differential because this is off the Buick. It's a little beat up. I guess they didn't care once they took it off the vehicle. They just smashed it around. Uh, luckily I don't need this. I don't think it damaged anything in there but it's 
I mean, it'd be nice to sell this, make a few dollars back. Um, and with that damage, I'll probably have to sell it for a little cheaper, but you know, whatever. Now this is the valve. This actually disconnects from here. Um, and that sits in there behind this. What that does is takes the pressurized fluid and sends it to the rest of the system. And then this particular one has the electronic limited slip differential, which has another one of these right here and does the same thing for the electronic limited slip diff, which is on this side of the differential. Um, if you don't have the electronic limited slip diff, you won't have these lines or this portion here. Um, you won't even have the any way to bolt it onto the other units. So, goes through there, this controls how much pressure goes to wherever. And then, this is kind of the part that is going to get me into another tangent. But, what's happening when you're driving and the system's got the fluid circulating and priming is if you see right in that little hole there, I'd look, that's a good spot. If you see right in that hole, you can see it's almost like gears spinning. What that is, is a, it's a slinger. It slings the oil back into the reservoir and keeps the fluid available for the pump. So it's not the pump that keeps the fluid really uh, flowing, because that shuts off once the system's pressurized. This is what brings the fluid back into the reservoir <clears throat> to keep the plump, the pump, <laughs> plump, the pump um, submerged in fluid to keep the system pressurized. Now, if you're driving around and your cross-wheel drive system is working intermittently, that's probably because the fluid's low. What's happening is it's pressurizing the system with the fluid it has and it exhausts it. Not, well, it runs out of fluid in this chamber here. It's got the system pressurized, engages the clutches, and then all of a sudden, since it's low, it's not getting above there. And you're going to lose activation of the rear wheels for a little bit until it's able to get fluid to the pumpkin. So if you have intermittent cross wheel drive operation, check the level. Um, now here's, here's the, port, the important part. If you want to dyno, if you want to dyno your cross wheel drive vehicle, do not put it on a two wheel drive dyno and deactivate the system. All you're asking for is to destroy this thing. The reason being, even on a four wheel drive dyno, unless the front and rear drums are like connected to each other, and even then don't do it, because what's happening when this is spinning, it's slinging the oil out of here, and if you have the system deactivated, it's not pumping the oil back into the system. So you're putting all the oil in here, and then it's filling this up, and then eventually it's just gonna come out with a vent tube because that's the only place for the oil to go. You're shoving it all in here. And the reason I believe this to be the case is because I've actually read um, other people's experiences with going to two-wheel drive dynos and deactivating the system, and then they had the oil actually come out of the valve, or valve, the uh, vent tube. So what's going on is it's slinging all the oil here, filling up, then you're, the clutches don't have any fluid left. They're just drying out, the rear wheels aren't moving, um, at least on an all-wheel drive, even on an all-wheel drive system if they are moving. Um, you're still slinging all that oil out here, not getting it back into the system, but especially on a two-wheel drive, you got the rear clutches, because there's, there's several clutches and um, some of them are for the rear, some of them are for the power coming from the front. And what's happening is those, the ones for the rear are just sitting stationary, and then the ones coming from the front, they're still spinning. And they're gonna create all this heat and just fry the clutches. They're just gonna fry those suckers because this is gonna spin. The faster you go, the faster it's gonna spin, the more heat that's gonna be generated. 
And if you have done this, maybe you got lucky and the system still works afterwards, but it's probably just severely shortened the life of your Haldex system. So just do not even do this if somebody recommends it. Don't be friends with them. Don't even give them your business. Because they, they don't know what's going on. I mean, I've heard of plenty of people that have done this and successfully done it. But I guarantee they just probably severely shortened the life of their system. And now they're going to have to replace it a lot sooner than they should have. So I, want, I almost wonder if that's what happened with my old um, differential that I took out of the vehicle. That or it could have been just lack of maintenance. I got the car with 75,000 miles on it, could have been driven hard uh, towards the end of those miles without the proper maintenance and then you're gonna probably run into clutch issues like I did. So anyways, that's kind of how the system works. Hopefully I can give, uh, provide a little more information that's been out there prior to this because uh, there's really not much. There's really not much or anything really that goes over how the fluid is put through the system and what exactly goes on. So, um, I don't, uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. Hopefully I kind of covered everything. I'm just kind of winging it on this, but, uh, any questions, just throw them down in the comments below and maybe I'll do another video if I missed anything. Uh, yeah. So hopefully you liked the video. Please comment, rate, subscribe, especially subscribe. I need more subscribers. I'm only at 228. I need a thousand. At least a thousand, guys. So tell your friends. Even if you don't watch my videos, just have people subscribe because I'd like to get to a thousand someday. Anyways, thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.